Well, I guess that whole fantasy of Tajay Spears being the next big PPR back has gone up in smoke. This is the fantasy sports boss. Tony Pollard signs with the Tennessee Titans. And that was a shocker. Did not think the Tennessee Titans were going to open up the vault for a running back. Obviously, Derrick Henry leaving town. As of the, uh, the, the moment I'm doing this video, he has not signed with a new team yet. Um, massively giant shoes to fill, but Tony Pollard and to a less, lesser extent, Tajay Spears in what's probably going to be a timeshare arrangement, 60-40, 70-30 Pollard. That's what's going to be in play for the Titans this season. Guys, I'm posting the videos left and right about the big signings today. Hit the subscribe button. More to come. Um, yeah, I didn't see this one coming with Tony Pollard. And um, <clears throat> I have some mixed feelings on it. Obviously, the first thing is that Tony Pollard has to just fuck everything up, right? He ruined fantasy teams last year. And now he ruined the opportunity for the fantasy football community to dive right in on Tajay Spears, who was excellent as a rookie last year, uh, catching 50-plus receptions in a part-time duty, ran the ball really well, left you wanting to see a lot more. And again, we all collectively would have dove fully in on Tajay Spears as a sought-after sleeper, but now this happens, and that's going to relegate Spears to really just um, <clears throat> running back three, top handcuff status for 2023, uh, 2024. He should be drafted. Now, as far, as far as Tony Pollard is concerned, I know this has gone around a lot. Uh, I know Matthew Berry spoke about this as well. Tony Pollard was the biggest fantasy bust in, in 2023, hands down. When you take into the fact that in the fact that he played all 17 games and was bad in pretty much 75% of them, uh, plus the rate advanced stats showing this as well, Tony Pollard was the worst player in fantasy. He was drafted in the early second round in most leagues, so that also you include as the benchmark. And again, over the 17 games of the season, he was bad. There's no doubt about it. And coming off a 2022 season where he was awesome, nine rushing touchdowns, Five-plus yards per carry. I believe it was a third year in a row he ran for over five yards per carry. Explosive back. Caught the ball really well. But he worked in tandem with Ezekiel Elliott, who was the goal line back. And did all the, the tough running in between the tackles while Pollard was more change of pace. But the Cowboys gave Pollard the job thinking he could handle it. But Pollard is a smaller back. And clearly, early on, whether with the fractured fibula had anything to do with it, I don't know. But Pollard just did not look right. All right, and he just looked like he couldn't handle the role. Now, he started out well. First three games, 15-plus PPR points, including the opener when he went for 20-plus. So that was a really good start. But the rest of the way, not so much. Eight of the last 13 games, um, single-digit PPR points. Like, just bad. And he was completely inefficient. Averaged only four yards per carry, which is a terrible number for a running back. Um, now, he did catch, uh, you know, quite a bit of passes, no doubt about it. Uh, 55 for 311. Tremendous. 1,005 rushing yards, six touchdowns, not so hot, four yards per carry. Um, and here's the here's the crazy stat. Ready? So um, Tony Pollard had 67 red zone touches last year and scored four touchdowns. Rico Dowdle, his backup, scored the same amount of touchdowns, four red zone touchdowns in only 18 touches. So... 67 red zone touches for Pollard, four touchdowns, 18 for Rico Dowdle, and he had four. So he was completely inefficient. I remember watching Pollard, too. You know, he had that awful drop at the end of the season where he, you know, uh, should have scored easily. He had that one catch, too, out of the backfield where he looked like he was going to walk into the end zone and somehow took a weird angle and was dragged down short of the goal line. And then Dak Prescott, I believe, ran it, uh, rushed it in. Uh, snuck it in there, but Tony Pollard was just terrible. And now, really, I don't like, I'm not going to be uh, going after Tony Pollard this year. I know they signed the center um, in free agency here, but the Titans' offensive line last year was one of the worst offensive lines in football, and they remain so. This is so, right off the bat, Pollard has that going against him. Also, Will Levis, we don't know that Will Levis can do the job. Very inconsistent. He's got a strong arm, but can he move the football? We don't know that. And then finally, Tajay Spears is not going away. Is it going to be a 70-30 split? Is it going to be 60-40? It might be 60-40. The Titans know, having seen Pollard last year struggling as the guy in Dallas, they're not going to want to overwork him. So Spears is going to get his work. Now, I would be aggressive on Spears as a handcuff, but Tony Pollard, I'm going to let him pass me by in fantasy drafts this season unless he falls into the dead zone. All right, guys, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think of the video. More videos on the way soon.